Mr. Blue Monkey, have you plucked your eyebrows just for this video? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Hi, what are the odds of us meeting like this? Pretty high, you clicked on the video. It's a behind the scenes, let's get into it. Easily one of the biggest questions I get asked is what software am I using to make the videos? And there's a couple of them. For the animation side of things, I use Cinema 4D. Sadly, this one costs money. But do not fear, there are free alternatives out there. Blender is the perfect one for you if you don't want to spend a penny. If you're curious about animation or modeling in any way, I highly recommend giving it a download. Another free animation software is Minimator. If you're only interested in animating Minecraft content, this is the way to go. One of the main benefits of this program is you can start creating cool stuff quickly. It's faster to set up and will be the perfect start for all your blocky needs. Okay, next up to edit the videos together, I use Adobe Premiere Pro and to do all the audio work, I use Sony Vegas Pro 14. Wow, that is a lot of pros. <laughs> We're going to be talking about one video specifically today, that video being Steve Steele's Alex's Diamonds. If you haven't seen it, click the card in the top right. If you have, <gasps> let's begin. If we get out of the video camera, we. <laughs> You'll notice our friend Steve here is stuck in the bed. And normally this would be a problem if we saw it on camera, but guess what? We don't. So in 3D, if something isn't showing on camera, we don't have to fix it. We don't have to move it. We don't have to do anything. You would not believe how much time this saves. Alex, what are you doing defying the laws of physics? You know you're not meant to do that. You, you stop. You stop right now. We only see Alex once she enters the window frame. So until that point, yeah, we're not going to animate her. It's such a simple idea. If you don't see it, don't move it. Grabbing all the loot for myself instead. And stop. I know, I know. Why are you pausing here? Listen, we're going to move the camera to the left. We're going to have a little look at what Alex is up to, okay? <gasps> Wait, did I just see Alex turn into Ben? I didn't just see Alex. I saw her turn into Ben. Okay, so in 3D, people who talk and move around, all that good stuff, they're called rigs. Rig is a fancy name for actors that are driven by things. Now, what in the world do I mean? Let me show you. Here we have everyone's favorite Steve. Say hello, Steve. Say hello. Yeah, okay, very clever. Steve is a rig. That means I can click on his arm control and make him wave. Hello. It means I can click on his foot and make him high kick. Yeah. And it also means I can turn that that frown upside down. Yeah. I, I don't know what sound a smile makes. That was my best shot. <clears throat> well, this all sounds great. Why don't you have a video with hundreds of rigs? Now, here's the problem. Rigs that are this complicated really slow down my computer. So by using two characters on a one rig speeds up my animation workflow a lot. You know when you're playing a game and the frame rate goes so low, it all becomes choppy and unplayable? Same happens in 3D. So by using one rig for two characters, we solve a lot of these frame rate issues. And the best part? You you never noticed it watching the video, and that means I did my job right. <laughs> I wish she'd actually say something useful for what- Sorry, you did what now? This shot here has something really cool going on. Let's zoom out the camera and see what's happening to the right. You see all of these hills and buildings? They are a problem. In the final shot, we can see the house, Steve, and the grass all evenly lit. But if I show you what it looks like now, you can see this nasty big shadow at the bottom. Now, how do we fix it? Remember that video where Steve bends the world up into the sky? Well, we're gonna yoink that idea and do the opposite. It. We're gonna throw the world down below itself. <laughs> I'm so sorry to all the villagers that live in these houses. <laughs> now that I've bent the world, if I show you again, it looks like the final video. No nasty shadow, all that business taken care of. It's also really fun to wiggle it about. <laughs> if you're enjoying this behind the scenes, let me know with a comment down below. I would love to do more of these. You've just got to let me know. Okay, back to the video. These side on shots are a lot of fun to make. What you're seeing here is actually a small recreation of the normal world. When I move the camera, you can see there's actually not much going on. The stairs on Alex's house are missing, trees are floating into the distance, and the stone Steve's mining into is only one block thick. All of this is done to serve the camera. It doesn't matter what I see in 3D, what matters is only what the audience sees. Huh, I wonder how long that'll take. Remember earlier when I mentioned how important it is to use the same rig for multiple characters? If I strap the camera to Steve's face, we can watch him instantly turn into a villager for the next shot. The only time in the whole video we see three characters together is the final shot. So until then, I'm going to be using these two rigs as much as possible. I know I've already been over this, but I thought it would be funny to watch Steve turn into a villager with a big forehead and a monobrow. Also in this shot, when the villager is talking to Alex, if we bring the camera outside of the house, 
house, we can see this huge gray box in the sky. What is that about? Why is that there? Well, we have our good friend, the sun, to thank for this one. See, when the villager goes more outside, away from Alex's front door, the sun kept lighting the villager in a really weird way. So what I'm doing by adding that huge gray box in the sky is stopping the sun touching the villager. That way, he doesn't have a weird light triangle on the side of his face. How have I got this far without mentioning physics? I mean, come on. That's what you want to know about. That's what I want to know about. They look so cool. Okay, first things first. We only ever see the physics when we're down in the side view. This is important because we have to make a collision mesh of the room. Now, I know this sounds like jargon, but there's only two things you need to understand for physics to work. Number one is a static mesh. This is like your house. You can't go through the floor. You can't go through the walls. You can't go through the ceiling. I mean, you could if you tried hard enough, but you're not gonna. <laughs> Any objects that interact with these walls, ceilings, or floors will not go through them. Now, this brings us on to number two, rigid bodies, which is a fancy name of things that fall down. Apply a rigid body tag to any object and it will interact with those walls, ceilings, and floors that we mentioned earlier. Look at them go, they're crazy. <laughs> Throw these items into an emitter and we can watch hundreds of them all fall down at once. And I think you've worked out how I got to the final video now. <laughs> Basically, just a lot of these, a lot of emitters. If you pay attention to Steve's left arm, you'll notice that there's actually an item that's bouncing on it. This is because Steve and Spooky, much like the walls, have collision meshes on them. If I take a blank cube, add the collision tag, and then I ram it through these items, bam! Look at that! How pretty is this? Can you tell I like messing with physics? Is it obvious yet? <laughs> <laughs> Having physics simulations, bending the world, these are all cool, cool things, but... We've run out of time. <laughs> so if there's a burning question you want to ask, let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, you take care of yourself. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.